In 1922, Harold R. Harris was a lieutenant in the U.S. Army Air Service and was stationed at McCook Field near Dayton, Ohio. On the morning of October 20, 1922, Harris piloted a loaning monoplane to 2,500 feet. The mission was to test a new type of aileron, which controls the aircraft's banking and turning. During a mock dogfight with another aircraft, the ailerons began to oscillate violently. This is his report. The control stick knocked my hand clear with its rapid side-to-side movements, severely bruising my legs just above the knee. Control of the aircraft was completely lost. I prepared to jump for my life. I was wearing a Type A parachute developed at McCook Field. The parachute was carried in a pack on my back. It was activated by a tug on the ripcord after clearing the airplane. As the aircraft began to dive toward the earth, I undid my safety belt and slid out through the top of the fuselage. This happened at about 700 feet above the ground. Parts of the left wing were beginning to disintegrate. A tremendous gust of wind caught me, sweeping my body away from the aircraft. I reached for the chute's ripcord and pulled. Nothing happened. I pulled again. Again, nothing happened. And a third time, nothing. I remember looking at my feet and realizing they were pointing toward the sky. My body was spinning, falling headfirst toward the ground. I then discovered I had been pulling on a leg strap fitting on the chute's harness. I quickly found the correct ring and pulled. The parachute opened almost immediately, with a considerable jerk snapping my body around so that my feet were finally facing the ground. I estimate the chute opened at about 500 feet. I landed on a fragile grape arbor which easily gave way and nicely broke the force of the fall to the brick pavement below. I walked away with only minor leg and hand bruises. The loaning crashed about three blocks away in the side yard of a house on Valley Street, causing little property damage and harming none on the ground. And so Harold R. Harris became the first pilot to save his life with a free-fall parachute in an emergency jump from a disabled airplane. The success of his jump led to a service-wide order on the use of parachutes. This was Harris's first parachute jump.